welcome to another video guys and in this video i'm gonna show you how you can go about researching and analyzing stocks in a pretty simple basic to understand way um this is intended to be for absolute beginners you're just getting started with investing um and you don't know necessarily what stocks to pick what to buy what to invest in and i'm gonna showcase this using three platforms that i use to do my own research and analysis to basically choose the stocks that I want to invest in. So we'll be using the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website, Simply Wall Street, as well as MyMoneyGA.com. Now, I just want to mention before we get into this, that none of this information should be taken as financial or investment advice. Please consult a licensed financial advisor to help you to determine how best to go about investing your money. This video is just for informational and educational purposes to help you to understand how you can go about researching and analyzing stocks and determining what to invest in. Now, there are some people that might use complicated valuation modules like discounted cash flow analysis and things like that, as well as there are others that utilize, for example, Excel to kind of track the performance of companies, kind of track how they do over time to use that as a means of determining what to invest in. And I know for most, especially if you don't have a, a background in, in finances and investing, that's going to be extremely difficult to do, or maybe that might not necessarily be something that you want to do. But what I'm going to show you in today's video is how you can use these three platforms, how you can use the websites to help you to, to make a more informed financial decision based on the data. So first, we're going to start with the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website. And for this video, I just chose to use Wigton Energy Limited or Wigton Wind, Farm, Wind Farms, um, the farmer name, to kind of illustrate the example and to kind of show you how you'd go about this. So the very first place you're going to go if you're doing any form of research or any form of analysis on any stock that is listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange is, of course, on the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website. So you'd go to www jamstockx.com and then from there you'd be able to navigate to search for whatever specific um, company that you want to look into so for this particular example the company that i chose to look at is wigton energy right so this is wigton energy as you can see currently it's trading at one dollars and nine cents since the last trading day which would have been yesterday it would have traded down two cents. So basically it's down 1.8% since trading last yesterday. And yesterday would have been November the 13th, um, which would have been Wednesday. So as you can see on the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website, there are three options you have. You can either view the, the line chart, you can view a candlestick chart, and you can view an OHLC chart. Now for... Most people, you're probably just going to look at the line charts. As you can see, um, Wigton would have started to trade um, for around 79 cents. I'm not sure what they listed at. I can't remember off the top of my head. But at least back in May of 2023, for the week ended there, um, they were trading at um, 79 cents. And as you can see today, Wigton is trading at around $1.09. Now, when you scroll down on the website, you'll notice um, some options here, right? So... You have options to see today's range, which is going to show the, the price range that the stock traded at. You have the 52-week range, which shows um, the prices the stock has traded at within the last 52 weeks, right? So as you can see, it traded at a low of $0.65 cents and at a high of $1.29. You'll also see the 52-week volume range, and this is just going to be a range of, of the volumes of units of the stock that traded. So as you can see, the lowest volume it traded within the last 52 weeks was around 67,000 units. And the highest volume that it traded in the last 52 weeks, again, was around 561 million shares. Um, the next thing you'll see is the market value of shares outstanding, which right now the market value is $11 billion, basically $11.9 um, billion dollars for for week 10 as of right now and of course the market value is simply you just multiplying the amount of shares outstanding which you can see here shares outstanding 11 billion you'd simply just multiply that by whatever the price the the stock is currently trading at so as you can see right now 
the stock is trading at $1.09. So if you multiply $1.09 by the 11 billion units that is outstanding, you get the 11.9 billion um, roughly that is trading at. Now, some other key things to note is over here, you can see week to date, the performance of the stock. You can see month to date, the performance of the stock, quarter to date, the performance of the stock, and year to date, the performance of the stock. So as you can see, um, over the last week, Wigton has traded down around 1.07%. Over the last month, it's up 1.26%. Over the last quarter, it's um down 0.96%. And then, of course, year to date, so since the start of 2024, we are up 37.87%. So that's just some of the, the main basic information that you'll see regarding the stock. As you can see at the side as well, um, of course, there's an option where you can select on it to, to go to a different stock if you want to. As well as below that, you see it shows the previous closing price, which would have been the price that Wigton closed at on the previous trading day. You'll see here the opening price. That's the price it started to trade at once the market opened at 9 a.m. You'll see the bid. And the bid is essentially what people are willing to buy the stock for. So think of this as an auction. When you go to an auction, you can bid what you want to purchase something for. So that's basically what this is. The ask is what people are willing to sell the stock for. So this is what people are asking in terms of how much you are required to pay to buy the stock from them. So those are the first things that you'll see up here. Then of course, you'll see the volume traded, which will show the, the volume traded on the, the last trading day. And then you'll see the last traded price, which again is $1.09. And then below that, you'll see some options for sum summary, price history, latest news, quarterly financials, annual reports, and audited financials. So that's why I tell people that essentially, the best place to go to get any form of information about any stock that is listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange is on the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website because you'll be able to see all the trade data, you'll be able to see a summary of the stock, you'll be able to see price history, all of the latest news, whether it's audited reports, unaudited reports, acquisitions, changes in management, dividends, all of that information is going to show up here. As well as, like you can see, um, there are options for quarterly financials, annual reports, audited financials. So basically everything related to the stock is, is there. Now, if we scroll a bit down, you'll see a performance section now, which can show you the quarterly earnings and the annual earnings. Now, the thing with the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website is that sometimes um, this isn't necessarily up to date. So sometimes you might find that um, newer earnings come out and they don't update the information or some information might be missing. And that is where the other platforms come in, like Simply Wall Street and My Money JA, because typically on those platforms, you'll be able to get more updated real time um, information where that is concerned, right? But in general, to get information, the best place to come is, is always here first. Now, as you can see, it shows some, some bar graphs here that will show the performance of the company. So as you can see, there are color codes down here. So Q1 is blue, Q2 is black, Q3 is green, and then Q4 is orange. So the color codes will um, match up to this. So if you kind of hover on them, you'll be able to see um, how they performed in, in that quarter in terms of earnings, right? And then of course, if earnings are like negative or there are no earnings for that quarter, then there's not gonna be a bar. And then whatever numbers they would have generated within that quarter, the negative number, it would be, deducted from like a previous quarter to kind of adjust the, the performance. And then similarly, you can switch the annual earnings, which will show you a more annual version um, of the same bar graphs. If you scroll down a bit, um, you can kind of see the, the numbers just the same that are displayed in this bar graph, but instead you can see it um, in, a, in a tabular format. So you have some people that, like I said, they'll use their own Excel files and stuff like that to research and analyze a stock. So they'll pull data like this and they'll put it on their own Excel to kind of chart their own graphs. And then maybe they'll look back on the annual reports and stuff like that to make sure that the numbers are correct, for example. So there are, there are some people that um, will, will, will do things that way to, to just make it easier for them. Maybe they have a specific format or a way they like to look at their investments. So they, they set it up to be able to look at it like that. And then if you scroll down a bit more, you'll see corporate actions, which are which include things like dividends. So as you can see, this is the dividend history for Wigton. So you can see the dividends between 2020, 2021, 2022, 2024. Um, they would have done two of them. So as you can see, basically they pay one dividend a year. 
with the exception of um, 2024, where you can see there are two dividends. And that might be because they, they didn't do a payment in 2023. Because as you can see, for the one they did in 2022, the payment kind of went over into 2023. So the payments tend to go over in the subsequent year, just based on, on what you're seeing here. But um, this basically will show the dividends that the company have has paid, the record date, um, the action, of course, which is dividend, that's the corporate action, the ex-dividend date, and the payment date, as well as dividend amount. Important thing to kind of note about dividends is no, because transaction processing time is T plus one on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. What that basically means is that the ex-dividend date and the record date are the same day, right? So you might notice here they are different. But as you see, up as recently as July when they did a dividend, it's basically the same day. And that's primarily because the JSE before was T plus two, where it's two processing days that it took for your um stock transaction to go through. So when you buy or sell a stock, it's two days after that you'd be seen as a shareholder. Whereas now with T plus one, it's basically the next day. So essentially now the record date and the ex-dividend date are the same date. And this date is extremely important because as long as you buy the stock, one trading day before this day, you would qualify for the dividend. So it don't matter how long you hold the stock for it, don't matter when you buy the stock, as long as you do it one trading day before this ex-dividend date, at the very least. And then you would, of course, qualify to get the dividends. And then, of course, below that, you'll see all the latest news. As you can see, they did some audited financials recently. Um, There was the change of name because they used to be Wigton Wind Farm Limited. Now it's Wigton Energies. You can see a resolution for their annual general meeting. You can see trading in shares. Um, You can basically see all the information about the stock there. And if you wanted to see more, you could click um, view all news to basically see all the information. So that's just a general overview for the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website. So as you can see, there are a lot of things that you could learn or information that you could get that could help you to make a more informed financial decision, right? So this is the first place you'll primarily come just to get news on the company in general. Now, the next website we're going to look at, because I just want to briefly go over all of these, so you get an understanding. So these other websites now, Simply Wall Street and My Money JA, they have free versions and they have paid versions. Now, for Simply Wall Street, for the free version, how it works is you get to view five stocks for the entire month, right? So you can view all the information on five stocks for the entire month. After that, you'd have to pay for the service. Personally, um, I pay for the service. Um, so I find value in it. I use it to research both local and U.S. stocks. So it works for me because Simply Wall Street isn't just um, limited to Jamaica. You can basically research any stock market in the entire world. Basically, all the big markets are going to essentially be there. So it doubles as a research tool, both for um, the Jamaica Stock Exchange and for the U.S. market, right? And of course, if I invest in any other markets in the future, it could um, double for that as well, right? So they have free versions, they have paid versions. Um, For the free version, it's pretty good. Um, Like I said, you can look at five stocks for the whole month. Um, What I did initially when I was brand, brand new to the services, I, I had multiple email accounts that were signed up because I have multiple emails, as most people probably do. So you know that if you have three emails, for example, and you have three different accounts, then you can look at like 15 stocks for the month or so, right? So that's how I kind of approach it. But no, I, I kind of pay for the service. And if it's something you're interested in, um, in the link in the bio of this um, video, you can um, check out our um, affiliate link to, to sign up for Simply Wall Street if you're interested in it. But Simply Wall Street essentially works as a better tool to help you to get more detailed information. And they do their own research. They do their own analysis. They crunch the numbers and everything. So you can review all the information here. So let's get into things, right? So as you can see, you can first see the stock and then you can see um, the sector they believe it falls into, which in this case, they believe it's utilities. Um, Some may say renewable energies. I guess it depends. Um, But utilities is what they, they classify it as here. I would probably classify it as, as renewable energies, but they, they have it as, as utilities, which basically is providing a utility through electricity. So as you can see, you can see the last traded price, which is the dollar nine cents, like we saw on the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website. You can see the market cap, which they rounded it up to, to 12 billion um, Jamaican dollars, which on Jamaica Stock Exchange's website, if you can recall, it was showing, I believe, 11.9 billion right here, right? So here they just show it as 12 billion. 
Then you can see the seven day performance and the one year performance. Over the last seven days, it's down 0.9%. Over the last one year, it's up 55.7%. So on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, it was showing us the year to date performance. This is just showing us for the last 12 months. So from this point, this year, so November 14 this year to November 14 of, of last year, basically, because as you can see, it was last updated on the 14th of November, right? So with Simply Wall Street, as you can see over here, there are quite a few things you can look at. You can look at company overview, valuation, future growth, past performance, financial health, dividend, management, ownership, and, and other information. So we're going to get into it. So first, for the company overview, it'll tell you what um, the company basically does. So essentially, Wigton engages in the generation and sale of electricity from wind technology in Jamaica. And you can, of course, click here to get more details, to get a further um, description of it here, which will bring you down to the about um, company section where you can get more information. But for now, let's kind of scroll back up to the top. So as you can see, um, they have a snowflake analysis, which for all the gamers out there, you remember back in the day when you used to play games and you can view your character stats and sometimes they'll show you like... um. This graph, I don't remember what they call this type of graph, but basically it'll show like attack, speed, defense, stuff like that, right? For for people who, who would have played games back in the day. So basically this is the same type of thing, but the, the metrics they have is value, dividend, future, health, pass. Now, what I'd say to you is, is take the information that you kind of get here with a grain of salt. And the reason why I say that is because... The Jamaica Stock Exchange is very different to other markets in the world. It's significantly smaller, right? But what will happen here on Simply Wall Street is that it will analyze and research the stocks and kind of gauge the stocks against other stock markets around the world that have significantly larger companies that operate in significantly more developed markets, etc. Right? So what that means is that it's not really judging the company based off of Jamaican standards, but it's judging the company based off of an international standard, meaning that it's a lot more strict in terms of how it analyzes the stock. And typically, the primary method they use to analyze the stock is um, discounted cash flow analysis, right? Which is which can be a very unfavorable metric to use for a lot of companies. But it does make sense. And reason why is because typically a business is only as valuable as the, the cash it can generate. And all value investors will kind of know this um, as kind of a rule, right? So that is kind of why they use that metric. But like I said, kind of take the information here with a grain of salt. It's not that it's inaccurate or anything, but the benchmarks that they use are going to be a lot more strict than probably what a local analysis or a local analyst would use to look into to these particular stocks, right? So kind of just, just take that with a, with a grain of salt. But nonetheless, the information is still valuable and it gives you um a pictorial um idea how the, how the business kind of looks, right? So as you can see right here, it's showing some competitors to, to Wigton. So like I mentioned, um, while MPC Caribbean Clean Energy is a, a local company on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, as you can see, there are other companies here that are not necessarily on the Jamaica Stock Exchange that are of vastly different values, right? Because, for example, MPC Clean is 1.9 billion um, Jamaican dollars in value, right? And up here, as you can see, it's saying that Wigton is $12 billion. But if you look on some of the other companies, I don't even know what currency this is, but it's showing us $1.8 um, trillion dollars. Then um, over here, you're seeing $2.7 billion. Then over here, you're seeing 72.3 million euros. So they're all different currencies, basically. So you know what? You can't really value these business in the same type of way because they're operating in different markets, right? It's a different economy there, different type of setup. A lot of things can be different. So even though it does compare these companies to Wigton to kind of help you to get an understanding of how the company fares globally, I wouldn't say that it's a, a fair way to kind of gauge the, the business. Of course, um, if you have options to invest in other markets and globally, then this can be a great way to go about it because you have options. But for the people that are probably investing locally, it might be a bit harsh to, to base um, the company's performance based on, on larger businesses, right? But that's just that's just my opinion personally. So the next thing you can see right here is price history and performance. So similarly, it will show a graph that will show you how the stock has performed over time. And as you can see, as far back, at least from this graph that it's showing, um, July 22nd, 
2019 was trading at around 90 cents, right? And as you can see, the price has fluctuated over time since then. So similar to the Jamaica Stock Exchange, you can see some data. You might not be able to see the entire history because it all depends on when Simply Wall Street started to, to track the stock. Whereas the info might be more accurate for, for like the US market, for example, because our market is significantly smaller. The information might not be as real time or, or as accurate, right? So just keep that in, in mind as well. So that's why it's kind of a combination uh, of different platforms that you, you use. And maybe my money, JA, in my opinion, would give a significantly better view on the local market because that platform is specific to, to the local market, right? So if you kind of go down now, similarly, again, you'll see recent news and updates like you would on the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website. And you can select see more updates to get more information right here, right? If you scroll down a bit more, um, you can also see shareholder returns over a given period of time. Um, it'll show you for the specific company, it'll show you for the industry, and then it will show you for the market. So as you can see here, it has it in the JM Renewable Energy Industry. And as you can see, over the last seven days, um, the industry has given around 0.08% um, performance return, or negative return. And over the last year, it's given around 1.5%, whereas Wigton is around 5 55.7% over the last year. And then it also shows you um the Jamaican market in general, like how it's performed over the same time period. I don't know what they classify as the renewable energies sector in Jamaica. Um, There are options to click here to kind of see probably what they, they lump in, but I'm guessing probably it's like it and MPC, clean energy. And most likely if they have information on, on other private entities or so forth, they might throw that data in there. It really depends. Then you can see, of course, the price volatility um, compared to the industry. So, of course, volatility means how much essentially the stock price changes or how frequently it changes over a given period of time. So, you know that if the price is always changing and it maybe one day is trading super high then one day it's trading super low, you know that it's going to be very volatile. Whereas a stock that maybe stays in the same price range over time, you know that, of course, that is not as volatile. It's not very vol volatile, right? So essentially what this is showing is that Wigton is a bit more volatile than the industry because on average, the industry will move around 2.9% either up or down, while Wigton will move 6.8% up or down um, within that same time period, right? But as you can see, um, based on what they're saying, they believe that uh, Wigton does have a, a stable share price. So this is another thing to note throughout these... Um, Different sections, simply Wall Street will tell you what they think is good or what they think is bad about the stock in a particular area. So as you can see, usually they have it in green when something is good and when something they think is bad, they'll they'll have it in, in red, right? If you go down a bit more, you can get a more detailed snapshot of the company here um, to get a bit more information. Um, as you can see, when it was founded, the employees, current CEO, as well as their um, website. I don't know if this is an accurate website, though for them but you'd be able to see their website here now to get down into more of the earnings as you can see this is Wigton wind farms uh limited fundamental summary so this shows you some key information so the earnings the revenue market cap so as we discussed before the market cap is essentially what the stock price is right now what the stock is trading at multiplied by the amount of shares outstanding so if you remember the earlier stock is at a dollar nine cents and there are 11 billion shares outstanding so a dollar nine times 11 billion and you get this amount, right? You will also see their revenues and their earnings. So revenue is the amount of money that they would have generated before their expenses, right? So before they take out cost of sales and stuff like that. Whereas their earnings is basically after they take out that stuff. So you can look at revenue as kind of the, the gross figure and earnings as a, a net figure. And then you can see the PE ratio or the, the price to earnings ratio. You can also see a PS ratio or price to sales. And these are different ratios, different metrics that are used to kind of gauge the company, right? So basically what this PE ratio is saying is that essentially based on the price that Wigton is trading at now, it's trading 18.6 times its current earnings. So for example, say, for example, the company, the company's earnings is, is one, for example, right? And let's say the company's stock price is one as well. You know that it would it would be one times basically because they're the same value. But say, for example, the company is worth um is worth one dollar just the same. And let's say um earnings are two dollars, right? Just as 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 an example. 
what that means is that the company is basically earning more than than what it's worth per share right so it's just it's just a metric to kind of give you an idea of how over or undervalued this the stock might be so it's one of the key ratios yeah price to earnings ratio price to sales ratio um pb ratio price to book ratio different ratios that you can use we won't get into those things um in this video just to keep it simple because this video is already probably going to be very long so if you scroll down a bit more you can see a earnings and revenue section which will give you more details in terms of the earnings and revenue so like i mentioned your revenues before they take out basically the cost and everything so as you can see the revenues number right here is 2.01 billion then once you take out the cost of the revenues which is around 723 million you're left with 1.3 billion as the gross profit then when you take out other expenses which is around 637 million you're left with earnings which is our own 644 million jamaican dollars right so as you can see revenues is what you start with and then once you take out all the direct costs you're left with your gross profit and then once you take out all other um expenses that aren't um direct costs that are directly associated with um whatever good or service that they are providing then um you're left with the, the earnings so as you can see the last reported earnings was september 29 2024 which which happens to be my birthday but that that was the last earnings based on on what simply wall street has and then you can see some more metrics you can see earnings per share that's basically them dividing this earnings number by the amount of shares that are outstanding. So they divide the 644.6 million by the 11 billion shares. Then you'll see the gross margin, um, net margin, and debt to equity ratio. And as you can see, if you hover over them, it'll give you an explanation of what each of these things are. So you can get an understanding of how that kind of works. But we won't go into too much detail on that as this is just supposed to be a simple video to show you how you can kind of get all of this information. So moving down, you'll see um, dividends next. So it'll show current dividend yield and the payout ratio, right? Similarly, if you hover over it, it'll explain what those things are. So that's what I love about Simply Wall Street too, is that with every information they provide, they have different areas where you can go, where they explain how it works, what it is, etc. So you have a better understanding, right? So as you can see, the current dividend yield is here and the payout ratio. Um, basically the dividend yield is how much money you get as a percentage of the amount of money you have invested. So if you invest a hundred thousand dollars, you get ten thousand dollars in dividends, then the dividend yield is ten percent because ten thousand is ten percent of a hundred thousand, just to keep it simple and, and explain that. But essentially every section will have an area that explains it. Now, as you can see here, this is where we get into to valuation. And like I said, um, whenever something is wrong that Simply Wall Street doesn't like, there'll be a red and an X, you'll know for sure. And when something is good that the, the company does like, then you'll you'll see it, it's green and, and ticked, right? I won't get into the specific things here, but like I said, you kind of have to take these things with a green salt because Simply Wall Street will kind of use some, some metrics that may be used in more developed economies and more developed markets to kind of gauge the companies. So... Like I said, they might be hard on them in terms of what they compare them to and the, the metrics that they use and the benchmarks that they use. So you just have to keep that in mind when you're doing this. And that's why we use different platforms, like I mentioned, to kind of aggregate um aggregate the information and, and our thought process. So as you can see, right now, it's saying that Wigton is overvalued. So in their opinion, based on their analysis, they're saying that Wigton's current price of a dollar and nine cents is way overvalued because they determine the fair value to be around 39 cents and now of course i mentioned this is debatable because it depends on the metric that they're using right and as you can see up here for this estimate we used a discounted cash flow model which a lot of value investors like to use that as a metric to gauge businesses but that not, might not necessarily work to, to gauge the value of every single business, right? So depending on the company, depending on the business, you may use a different metric to kind of value it or a combination of different metrics, right? But this is typically the metric that they use to, to value every stock, right? This, they just use the same exact um, method in most cases. So this is their valuation um, of the company based on what you can see there. So they get X's for that because they believe that it is essentially way above their fair value. Um, so they think it's it's overvalued at, at where it is. And if you scroll down a bit more, like I said, you can see some of the key ratios where they work it out and calculate everything for you. And it will actually explain to you what these ratios are if you kind of 
hover over this. It'll give you an idea how they work out. The key ones they usually use is price to earnings, price to sales, price to book value, and then sometimes there are other metrics they use like enterprise value, um, enterprise value to EBITDA, and PEG ratio. So there are a lot of different ones they use. The good thing, like I said, is that they explain what every ratio is so you can get an understanding. And with investing, as you learn these things over time, it becomes an easier process to understand all of this. Trust me, it seems complicated, but the good thing is you have these websites, you have these platforms that you can get all the information. It'll explain what they are to you. If you don't understand, you watch a video, you do a Google search, or you, you look it up on another platform. Investopedia is a great way to learn about all things investing related, to learn concepts and what different words mean and stuff like that. So that's one avenue you can take as well. Now, if we go down a bit more, um, this is the price to earnings ratio versus peers. So as I said, um, it'll compare it to both local businesses and international businesses. So these are the ones that it believes Wigton is the same as. So I know MPC Caribbean Clean Energy would be a fair comparison because it is within our market, but they have other companies here that they believe it's similar to, as well as you can edit peers up here to kind of change um, the peers that are there. Maybe you want to compare it to like a different company, even if it's not in the same industry, but maybe you just want to compare it to different companies. You can click edit peers and then add them in. And similarly, you can see comparisons for price to sales, as well as um, price to book as well, just the same. So if you go down, you'll also see historically the price to earnings ratio. So the, the, the higher the PE is, is typically the more overvalued um, investors believe a company is the lower the PE is is the the closer to being undervalued the company uh, may be so typically you can look at it this way high PE ratio bad low PE ratio good right but it, it really depends and it needs a lot more context because you have to compare it to the industry you have to compare it to competitors and other things so you wouldn't just use it as a single metric to kind of gauge everything and similarly you can see the trend for both price to book price to sales um, as well as price to earnings, and you can choose the, the time frame to look at it with a three months, one year, three year, uh, five years. So all the information is there. So let's keep um scrolling. So if you go down, um similarly, it'll show you some ranges for, for PEs. Um, so you can kind of compare it to global renewable en energy industry, right? So like you can see, the industry average globally is around 14.3 times. Whereas Wigton is our own um, 18.6 times. As you see, if you kind of move it along the chart, you'll be able to see the companies it believes in the same industry that are at the lower end and that are at the higher end. And you see they come up here. So companies are all over the world. And like you can see, some of these companies are way bigger than um, what Wigton is because this company is 62 billion US dollars, which is way larger than Wigton. Um, so yeah. That is why I say you, you kind of have to use the metrics that it used to, to compare the companies. You kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. Maybe compared to more local companies might be a, a fairer assessment. But if we continue, um, it just has some more information where PE is concerned. Over here, you'll see analyst price targets. Um, Jamaica doesn't really have a lot of analysts that follow our market besides those who are local. So you're not going to really see much here um, on these lower sections for this valuation part. But for other companies that are like listed in the U.S. market, maybe like a Netflix or Apple, Google, Amazon, you'll see information here. Analysts will have price targets, forecasts, stuff like that. So more complicated, um, detailed information will be available. But if we go down, we go to the future growth section. And as you can see, it's all X's. And that's primarily because it's either they don't have the information that they need, so it's not available, or maybe the metrics that they're using for the, the company because it's based on global standards, um, these companies can't be really gauged in that type of way, right? It works for some companies, but not for all of them, right? So in a lot of cases, though, why you see all these X's is simply because they just don't have the data or they don't have the information that they would need to kind of determine any of this. So it's just going to be all X's, which is going to weigh heavily on the company in terms of like the, the chart that you see over here. But um, it's still a great way to get information. It's just that not all the information might might not be available. And like I said, in this case, um, this is very reliant on what analysts think about the company and forecasts and stuff like that. And like we mentioned, there's simply just no analyst analysts or analysis done by any of of their analysts to, to kind of give you that information, right? Because they will typically put more effort into markets that are more developed, that more people care about, like the US market and maybe London Stock Exchange or 
the Japanese market are basically bigger markets like in Europe, for example. They'll care more about those markets than, of course, the Jamaica Stock Exchange because it's significantly smaller and there's just going to be less demand for people looking for information um, on that market, right? Next, if you go down, there's the past performance section. So as you can see, um, there are some green, some red, mostly green though. Um, but essentially what you kind of have here is a, a revenue and expense breakdown. So you can see um, revenue and expense breakdown for, for different years. So if you click on it, you can kind of get an idea of how the company's revenues, expenses, stuff like that flowed over different years. So as you can see, as the business changed, it kind of flowed in a different way, right? So it kind of gives you more context in terms of how um, the company performed in the past and how like revenues, how earnings, how all of those things were breaking down, what the expenses were like, etc. So this can give you a lot of insight. And like I said, for those people that do like the Excels, for example, it makes it very easy to kind of get all this information, put it on your Excel and maybe chart your own bar graphs or charts or whatever to get a better understanding. And if you kind of go down a bit more, you'll get to, to view um, earnings and revenue history. So this is where you're going to be able to see the revenue, which is in blue. You're going to be able to see earnings, which is in this um, turquoise green, free cash flow, which is the pink, cash flow from operations, um, the, the orange, and then operating expenses. So you can basically chart all of these on the chart and see what they are like over time and kind of track them in real time. So it, it's a good way of visual, visualizing the information. So you don't have to be reading through all these pages. You can basically visualize and, and get a better look or idea of what the information is like. So this is very helpful for, for those people that might not necessarily want to, to, to read everything, right? So you can get a visual look at, at everything. And if you scroll down a bit more, you will see uh, more details regarding free cash flow versus earnings analysis. Um, like I said, It'll give you more details, more insight into how the numbers break down, how everything works. I won't go into detail on all of these because this video would go on and on and on forever. But what I want to introduce you to is the fact that you can use these platforms to view this information. And then over time, as you go along, you kind of just learn um, different parts or different aspects of, of how all of this works. Now, if you scroll down a bit more, um, you'll see past earnings growth analysis. So I like I like this part too, because it will compare the company's earnings versus how the industry performs, how the market performs. So as you can see, over the last one year, in terms of earnings growth, Wigton has done extremely well, like significantly better than the, the market. And that might be one of the things that would have led to it having good performance over the year. Because if you remember above, um, over the last year, it was up 50 something percent, right? So that could be one of the things that led to it essentially having um great performance in terms of the stock, right? So I kind of like this metric um a lot too. Next, you'll see um some some charts here that I like too as well because it will compare the company to the industry. So it'll compare return on equity, it'll compare return on assets, return on capital employed. Um, so you can kind of get a, a idea of how the company stacks up percentage wise. Um, towards the, the industry. So you can get the idea of how the business is doing over the short term and over the long term when compared to its industry. So as you can see, where return on assets are concerned, week time, the company is doing 7.8%, where the industry is 6%. So from that, you can deduce that week time, in terms of return on assets, is doing better than the, the overall industry. So this is a good way to kind of be able to, to view that information. If you go down a bit more, another section I really, really love is, is the balance sheet section because I love a company that has a, a healthy balance sheet. So as you can see, it shows some, some ratios here and Wigton is doing amazing where their balance sheet is concerned, right? So the debt to equity ratio is 63.9%, meaning debt is 63.9% of, of equity. So if the overall number is 100, then 63.9% of the equity saying equity is 100, debt is 63.9% of that, right? And debt right now for them stands at 3.46 billion. So it'll show the interest coverage rate, which similarly, if you hover over it, it'll explain what all of these things are. It'll show cash, equity, total liabilities, total assets. Now, like I mentioned, I love a company that has both short-term and long-term assets in excess of both short-term and long-term liabilities, respectively, because what it means is that should these liabilities come due in the short-term, the company can easily cover it 
by selling off some short-term assets. And similarly, over the long term, as these liabilities become due, the company has long-term assets willing excess of that as well. So I love a company that both has short-term and long-term assets in excess of short-term and long-term liabilities, respectively, right? So that's a good sign of a company that's in a pretty good position. Then over time, like you can see, you can see how the debt and um, equity of the company has trended. So if we went back to maybe around 2018, as you can see, Wigton had significantly more debt than it had equity and cash and equivalents. But over time, as you can see, as the business was operating, as they generated those revenues, as they generated this cash, you can see that over time, it seems they would have paid down the debt to where now, you can see where equity is significantly more than debt and actually they almost have more cash than they do debt, which is also a very good sign when they have more cash and cash equivalents than debt. Because what that means is the company is in a very healthy position where the balance sheet is concerned. And if push come to shove and something bad happened in the economy or something bad happened to the company, they'd easily be able to cover um, their debts. What this also means is that in the event that something goes wrong with the business and it has to wind up its operations, right? It means that the company could easily sell all of its assets, sell everything, and pay off the debt, and then we would still be able to get our money back, right? So that is why you ideally want to see both the long-term, short-term assets in excess of um, long-term, short-term liabilities, as well as you want to see equity greater than debt as well. And you want to see companies, of course, with a healthy cash balance, cash equivalence, because remember the cash is the fuel to the business. That is what they're going to use to invest, to expand their business, to acquire companies, to do different things, right? Pay out dividends, etc. So it's good when a company has a lot of cash, a lot of cash equivalents, good when a company's equity is in excess of its debt, etc. right? And then, of course, I keep clicking the wrong side of my keypad. Sorry, guys. So, of course, if you kind of go down, um, it'll show you why it thinks these things are a good thing. So, like I mentioned, it mentions debt level, reducing debt, debt coverage, interest coverage, etc. Right. So, like I said, you can get more detail, more information by hovering over everything. You can view the data. You can get more information, essentially, in terms of what's going on. And then if you scroll down, you'll get a, a better breakdown of the balance sheets. As you can see, see it shows um, basically what makes up the assets. As you can see, most of it is physical assets. Then you have receivables, cash and short-term investments, long-term and, and other assets. It will give you a, a breakdown so you can visually um, view everything in this way. And then, of course, if we keep going down, we'll take you to the dividend section. This is where you're going to see everything where dividends are concerned. Um, so you'll see the total shareholder yield, future dividend yield, dividend growth, next dividend date, ex dividend date, dividend per share payout ratio. So this is a section that tells you everything about dividends. Um, Wigton isn't really a dividend paying stock, so you're not going to really see much here. But for more dividend paying stocks, like maybe Trans Jamaica Highway, Carreras, um, you'll see where, more where that is concerned here. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So going down from there, you will be able to see stability and growth where the dividends are concerned. And like I mentioned, Wigton isn't much of a dividend stock, but for more dividend stocks, you'll see more data here, more information that might give you a bit more insight um, on the stock. Then as we go down, um, this is another section I like a lot, but for dividend stocks, of course, um, this will show you the dividend yield versus the market. So you can compare the dividend yield versus the bottom 25% companies, which have the lower dividend yields, to the top 25%, as well as you can compare it to the industry average. So this will give you an idea of how other companies in the industry approach their dividends and how dividends work, where, where that is concerned. And then, of course, if you scroll down, um, you'll see more information on the dividends, like earnings payout to shareholders, um, cash payout to shareholders, different metrics like this that can help you to gauge the frequency, the consistency, um, the, the stability of, of dividend payments and of dividends um, over time. So this, this also gives you a lot of good insight where that is concerned. Then another section is for management. So this will tell you more about like the CEO. It'll tell you about the management team, um, those people that are in charge. So the leadership team, it'll give you more information in terms of their ownership stake, what their compensation is like, what their tenure is like. So for this section, um, as you can see, there's a lot of sections that have no data because they simply just don't, don't have the information, right? And 
you'll see that a lot where Simply Wall Street is concerned because like I said, for the Jamaican market, it's not a platform really specific to our market. So they're more fo focused on the larger markets because that's where the demand is, right? So the US market, etc. My Money JA kind of does a better job of giving you this, this type of information, but we'll get into that in a bit. So let's see if we can wrap up Simply Wall Street. So similarly, you can see all the, the board members here. Um, you can see ownership stake, other information, etc. So there are a lot of different pieces of information that are available here. You can see ownership breakdown and, and all kinds of stuff like that that can help you to get um more information about the, the stock in general. So similarly here, you can see all the, the top shareholders. And that's basically it for Simply Wall Street, right? So number of employees, all of that stuff. So I just wanted to scroll through um, just so you can get the idea of it real quickly so we can get into my money JA next so you get the understanding of how that platform works. Oh, of course, I left the best for last. So the last website that I use a lot to help me to research and analyze stocks is mymoneyja.com. No, there are a few caveats with this. So My Money JA, they have a free service and they have a paid service. With the free service, you're able to do things like track your portfolio, view, overview of the market, check market news, things like that. However, some data you're not going to be able to see to kind of research and analyze the stock. So for example, the performance section is not going to be available. Dividend section is not going to be available. Trade history is not going to be available. So quite a lot of the features aren't going to be available. But personally, I think it is worth paying for the paid service if you're somebody that is going to look to seriously um, research and analyze stocks that you want to invest in. I personally think it's it's worth it. They have one that is $15 a month and one that is $30 a month. Um, You can get away with using the $15 a month one perfectly fine. I pay for the one that's $30 a month because it's just premium. Everything is unlimited. So I just don't have to worry about not having access to something or something not working, for example. So I'm okay with paying the $30 a month because it's made me way more than that to be able to use this platform. But all of or most of what I'm going to be showing you through the platform is, is what you'd be able to access through the paid version. So just keep that in mind. So that's one of the reasons I kind of saved this for last because whereas with Simply Wall Street, there are free and paid versions, you do get access to everything with the free version on Simply Wall Street. It's just that you're limited to how many stocks you can look at. Whereas here, if you have the free version and not the paid version, then you're just blocked out at just certain things. You can use the portfolio, you can track your portfolio, stuff like that. You can look at the market, stuff like that. But you just can't specifically look at some data that is going to be important for you to, of course, research and analyze the stock. Now, similarly with My Money J8 has all the information that we covered um, that was on the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website and all the info from Simply Wall Street. It's just that it's a lot more condensed, all in one place and a lot easier to see, right? So as you can see, you can see the price chart just the same. You can see an overview of this, the stock where it shows you like a whole heap of different stuff. So as you can see, it's a whole heap of different information. A lot of the stuff we covered previously when we were looking at the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website and Simply Wall Street. Similarly, um, as you can see here, you can see the same candlestick charts, same OHLC charts, just that it all just looks a lot more clean, a lot more finished. Um, it's easier for you to just see all the information all in one place, more user-friendly and everything. You can even link it up to like JTrader Pro and stuff like that, right? So it's just a service I've used a lot and it, it's it's very beneficial in terms of being able to research, analyze stocks, track the market, different stuff like that, right? As you can see, there's a performance section down here. Similarly, you have a section where you can view all the information about the stocks. So you can view the quarterlies, annual, others. So it makes it a lot more easier to find what you're looking for. Whereas on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, you'll have to maybe look through news or look through the company information to find it. And then sometimes not all the documents are where they should be. Here, you can literally find all the documents you want. So if I go on annual reports and I want to see the 2023, 2024 annual report, I just click on it like this and it will it will open it up. Um, For this specific document, it seems it's not working. Let me try another one. I don't know, that last one seems to not be working. But as you can see, basically just pull up the document for you, right? So 
it makes it a lot easier to find a lot of these documents. Similarly, dividend section, you can see the dollar amount for the dividends paid. Everything is in one place. You can look at previous years and compare it to the current year, or you can compare different years. You can also see it from a yield perspective to see the, the percentage yield as well. Another thing I love about their site is they kind of have trade heat maps too. So you can kind of see on what days a stock kind of traded more. And then maybe you can look back at that day to see what happened. Maybe look in the news to see if something happened around that day, right? So that can kind of help you to gauge what type of news might push the stock, for example, or, or what events might, might push the stock. So you can look at this from a year's perspective, quarterly, monthly, weekly, etc. right? And if you go weekly, you can even see what is happening on the day to see if none of those things will, will impact the market in, in any way, right? So as you can see, today we're supposed to get a Q2 report from them. And that might be why on the 11th of November, there was like a lot of trade volume kind of leading up to the day with people maybe expecting the report, right? So you can kind of draw different conclusions. And then if you scroll down, similarly, you can see all the recent news. And then if you want a specific type of news, you can click financial results. If you want to know about dividends, you click dividends, insider trading, to see if um any connected parties or board members or anybody like that traded info about meetings or just other information in general, then you can view all the information. But that's just kind of a rough um overview of just the main page of the stock. And as you can see, there's a whole heap of information here. There are different toggles, different buttons, different things you can go on to see just different pieces of information. So it's a very condensed page has everything you'll need in one page. Very easy to understand, in my opinion. All the different things are categorized well. But there are two specific sections we're probably going to be looking at. So we're going to be looking at the performance section first, and then we're going to go over to the, the Q section. Specifically, we're going to click on this, which will take us to an analysis page that can give you a lot of insight. But first, we're going to start over here with the little performance section here, right? So as you can see, similarly to what I showed you on Simply Wall Street, you can kind of see how the company has performed, right, over a specific period of time. So in this case, you can actually compare it with different years too. So if I want to compare, for example, um, let's go up because Wigton doesn't have stuff this far back. So say we wanted to compare, say, 2020 to maybe 2022. It gives you the option to, to see from, from, not compare, my bad, if you want to see from 2022 to 2020, from 2020 to 2022, it gives you the option to basically scroll on date range to kind of view how the companies perform. So you can see this is how they did in 2018, this is how they did in 2019, this is how they did in 2020, and so on and so forth, right? So it, it gives you a means of comparing how the company has performed over each subsequent year. And then as you can see, when I kind of hover over it, the bar, it'll show me like um the percentage change, whether it went up or down. So it gives you a pretty easy way of just comparing how the company performed over certain years, as well as you can go on quarterly and see like a breakdown over each quarter to get that understanding. So similar data to what you can see on um Simply Wall Street, um just all just compact and, and in one specific place. But I'm gonna show you how you can actually see a more detailed view of a lot of this information. So the main page I kind of want to show you guys on a page that I really, really, really like where um my money J is concerned is when you go to Q and you go over to this section, right? So this section is is the stock analysis page, and it will give you a lot of insight in terms of what is going on on the market, right? So this is this is the page that I really like, and this is where I think the, the value comes in, right? So for those people that maybe want to trade on more short-term data or base their investing less off of fundamentals and more off of technical type analysis, then this page is the page for you because it gives you a breakdown where you can see the same OHLC charts or, or candlesticks, whatever you want. You can set it to whatever time frame that you want. There's a slider down here. You can drag it to set the time frame. And then over here, you have different indicators you can set, right? So you can see the 52-week high, 52-week low, as well as you can add different indicators for variable weighted average price, relative strength index, exponent, exponential moving averages. You can add all kinds of different markers, indicators. If you want a specific pr price marker, stuff like that, right? You can even turn on or toggle on options here that will add different things to the graph 
to kind of show you more detailed information on the stock, right? So it makes it a lot easier to do more short-term trades. You can look at the queue, for example, to see the trade history, how the stock has trade. You can see what the total buy side is like compared to the total sell side. Um, you can see the queue on both sides to see how many shares, how many units of stock people are selling, stuff like that, right? So it gives you a lot of insight that you could use for more short-term trading that involves more technicals, right? Another thing I really love about Simply Wall Street is there are various different tools you can use, right? So one of the tools that we're on right now is the analysis tool, of course, but there are different tools like shareholders. So if you click on this option, you can see who the major shareholders are in a specific company. So say for instance, we want to go to Wigton, right? And this is very helpful because what this kind of does is this will help you to see the breakdown or the makeup of who owns what in the company. And you can see as their shareholding kind of changes over time, which can also give you a lot of insight. So you can see the top owners, the board members, the managers, etc. right? So you can see a lot of information where that is concerned for a specific stock like Wigton. So I think that that is also a very useful feature as well because it can give you a lot of insight, right? And there are also different tools that you, you can use here. As you can see, another tool I really like is the dollar cost average tool. And for a lot of people that watch my videos on TikTok, you might see me use this a lot because it's a great way to show you how consistent long-term investing can work out for you over time, right? So let's also use Wigton as an example. Let's say you invested Wigton $10,000 a month. Let's just say your broker is JMMB and let's say you were investing since IPO, you just put $10,000 a month regardless of what the stock price is, right? Over that time, you would have essentially um invested $607,000 worth of your money. You bought 844,257 shares, which is 61 per purchases. The current value of your portfolio would be 920,000. The dividends you'd have earned over that time would be around 18,000 plus. And as you can see, the gains would be around 312,000. $905.61, which means you'd be up 51.52%. So this is kind of a good tool or a good feature that can kind of show you how long-term consistent investing um, can build up a portfolio over time, right? And this is just in a matter of um around five years of you just doing $10,000 a month in one specific stock. So you know that if you did more money every month or Maybe if it was a different stock, then the returns can, of course, vary. And then, of course, past performance is not indicative of future success. But you know that at the very least, you can kind of get an idea of what it would have done for you, right? And then just to kind of go over some other stuff briefly, um, where my money J is concerned. So like I mentioned, you can see a breakdown of the overall stock market. You can see all the indices. You can see the top 10 advances, top 10 decliners. You can see a NAV report. Um, there's a calendar of activities so you can see what is happening what day so it makes it very easy to track what's going on with the market what report is coming out when and this section for the overview is a section you can access for free if you have the free version so even if you're not willing to pay for the paid version for the analysis side of things it's still good to get an overview of the market through the free version so you can still use it to do that and then of course if you click on the option for market then of course you can go ahead and view all the individual stocks that are on the market, see how they're performing, see what their returns are. Some of the information won't be available if you don't have the um, premium version. In terms of some of the indicators, I believe like PE would be um kind of blanked out so you couldn't see it or blurred out. But a lot of the other stuff you'd still be able to um, access nonetheless. So you can search for whatever stock you want or look for whatever stock you want and you can pull it up. So if you want Wigton, we just search for Wigton and as you can see, we can go back over to Wigton where you can see all the information like what we were covering earlier. Um, I, I ticked a whole heap of different stuff here. So that's how you see all kinds of stuff going on on the graph. But it just makes it very easy for you to essentially research, analyze the stocks and do all of that stuff, right? So that is kind of what I wanted to give you an idea of where my money J is concerned. And the reason I'm not going into more detail is that for some of the features, you just wouldn't be able to access them without a paid version. And I know that some people might not want to necessarily pay the $15 a month or pay the $30 a month. But what I'd say is maybe try the free version, use it for a bit. And as you invest more, as you maybe do more short-term trading and stuff like that, it will become a more valuable resource over time. 
and maybe by then it would make sense to um pay for it. But similarly, you can track your portfolio. I won't go on it um to reveal my portfolios and stuff, but you can track your portfolio just the same in your trades and all of that. And you can also keep track of news too. So all the big news um houses, all the news sources that cover investing, business, Jamaica Stock Exchange, all the information where that is concerned will be pooled and aggregated here. So it's kind of a great way that you can get all the news. And then, of course, on the last thing down here, there's a wiki where that can basically teach you a lot of things about investing, how they do the calculations, how a lot of these different stuff work. So you get an understanding of it too. So it can be a great resource to, to help you and to, to teach you about investing. But these are essentially the three platforms I use between the Jamaica Stock Exchange's website, Simply Wall Street, and MyMoneyJA.com. I basically use all of this to gather the basic information I need to, to choose or decide what I'm going to invest in. Of course, I'll utilize different things as well because I use Excel sometimes. I pull down the data. I set it up myself so I can do my different ratios, my different analysis, my different models. I'll also look at the analysis that different brokers do to get the idea of what are some of the metrics or things that they look at when they're researching the same stock. And I'll use a plethora of other stuff to kind of get an understanding, right? So I'll watch earning calls. I'll watch other creators review the stock and look into the specific investments, things like that to just help me to have a better understanding of the company. But as you can see, just from this video, that's probably over an hour now, there's a lot that goes into research and analyzing stocks. And it's not as difficult as you think, because once you have an idea of all these platforms and you kind of use them in tandem, it becomes a lot easier for you to be able to go through and, and research and analyze the stocks or at least get a basic idea of some of the things that you might want to look for in the stock to help it better for you to research these businesses. If this video was helpful for you, definitely leave a like, share the video, comment. I'd love to hear from you in the comments and what you think. Um, This was more of a casual video, just me going over how I go about my investing, but I, I hope it was helpful to you nonetheless. Remember, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So I appreciate anybody that can subscribe to us and support us in that way. And as always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for joining again. Take care.